Hello everyone, this is Ibrahim, Spiritual Community Animator. I hope you're doing well. In case I didn't come to your class to do my January presentation, uh, well, first, I would like to wish you a Happy New Year. I hope that 2021 is going to be filled uh, with, you know, learning opportunities, filled with personal growth, and definitely filled with exciting adventures. So uh, I would like to do this presentation online in case you didn't see it, in case you missed it, uh, I didn't get the chance to come to your class. Uh, you will still could watch it online, although it's not going to be the same. Uh, but we'll try to mimic the online presentation, the physical presentation, sorry, as much as we can. All right. So uh, you know that I like to always make it engaging. I like to ask questions. I like to hear from you. Uh, so we'll try to do the same. Uh, but when I ask questions, I will tell you to just pause the video, think about, you know, your answers, think about what you want to share, and then come back and play it again. All right. So I'll be telling you uh, when to pause, when to, uh, you know, whenever you're ready, you could play it back again. So before we begin, uh, let us make sure that you have a mindful posture. Make sure that your lungs are not crushed. You know, you're not, you know, uh, uh, sleeping on your desk, you know. Uh, that your feet are well grounded. Okay, you're in a very mindful position. And uh, now we are ready to start. So let's look back at 2020. All right. And I uh, have a few questions for you now. When you look back at 2020, it's very easy for people to complain about 2020, whether like, you know, young adults, uh, students, teachers, you know, staff members. I find that a lot of people are complaining about 2020. And if you attended the gratitude uh, uh, presentation that I did, you already know that gratitude is an attitude that stays with us, right? It stays with us throughout the whole year. So you know what? Let's call upon that. Let's summon that attitude of ours, that gratitude attitude that we have, and uh, use it right now. First, I want you to think about one thing that happened to you in 2020 that you are grateful for it could be something personal uh you know something that happened at home uh, within your family that you're grateful for it could be something school related like you know what uh, I'm, I'm grateful for um something that happened at school it could be uh, related to just your class and your grades right your exams your grades um it could be something that you're grateful for that you know uh, happened during uh, the summer because it's so 20 so you're going to tell me uh, one thing that you are grateful for. We're going to use our gratitude attitude, and you're going to start We're going to start with that question. We're going to practice positive thinking. Okay, we're going to practice positive thinking. And the reason I want you to do that, it's not just for the sake of it, right? I always like to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing so that you can see the benefit and so you can see the point, okay? When you practice positive thinking, right, when you remember and focus the uh, on the... Uh, positive things, the you know the good things that happen to you. You you will have a mindful. Um, uh, you you will have a positive attitude. Okay, positive thinking, and then emotionally, uh, you will feel better. Okay, so your thoughts affect your emotions. What goes on into your brain, it really affects how you feel. So if you're thinking positive, then emotionally you will feel better. You will feel out of balance, right? Uh, and you won't feel low, you won't, you won't feel down, right? It will help you, it will help cheer you up a little bit. Once you have positive thoughts, healthy emotions, balanced emotions, your actions are also going to be effective, right? So it's, 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 uh, you know, it starts with the mind, your emotions, and then your actions, they're all connected, they're all connected. So that's why I really want us to start with uh, positive thinking, all right? Uh, so that even your actions for the rest of the day, they will be affected by that. Do you see how important that is? So let us start with that. I want you to think about something that you're grateful for that happened to you in 2020. Share your answers either with your teacher, with your classmates. And then I want you to uh, pause the video right now and then come back whenever you're ready. Oh. Okay, so uh, welcome back. Um, so now I'm guessing you shared a few answers. You mentioned what are you grateful for, right? Um, right now, I'm, I'm sure you see that sheet that we have, right? Uh, 
So this is a sheet, right? Uh, it's up also uploaded. Um, it, was, I, it was sent to the teachers who, of course, received this video. Um, so they could pull it out for you. Um, and maybe you guys could do it in a discussion group or you could do it, uh, you know, you could have by filling out that, those, those uh, sheets, those goodbye 2020 sheets, okay? So think about, now we're gonna break down our gratitude, uh, great moments that happen in class. It could be as simple as, you know what, I did really well in one of the tests that was very challenging for me. Oh, you know what, I had a hard time with Escal and I did super well, so that's a great moment, right? Um, now, if you look down at school, it could be I was part of a wider school project, right? Um, something that you're grateful for that happened at school. And then uh, the last part, of course, something that happened outside of school. That's where your personal, you know, maybe uh, in the summer of 2020, uh, my parents and I, we had a small vacation or, you know what, I was able to spend more time with my family uh, over, you know, the summer or maybe even in fall because of, you know, social distancing and whatnot, right? So um, anything that is you're grateful for, all right? Uh, now, yeah, I want you also to think about tough obstacles, right? Because I want you to also have a balanced uh, mindset, a balanced approach, right? Think about the great moments and think about the tough obstacles, right? A gratitude attitude, by the way, does not completely neglect and erase uh, tough obstacles as if they're not there. We don't see them. No, no, that's not how we deal with obstacles. With your gratitude attitude, with positive thinking, right? We see those obstacles, but we also see that there's some something positive in them, right? That's what we try to work on. So a uh, tough obstacle, it could be, uh, think about your tough obstacles, something that was challenging in class, at school, outside of school, all right? So for example, in class, it could be, you know what? It was really hard for me to always, you know, uh, of course, for the all grade uh, cycle three students, it was really hard for me to keep my mask on during class. You know, that was very challenging. It was, it was I was not comfortable. I'm not used to it, right? It could be, uh, uh, you know, when we had that first week of virtual learning, that was really tough. Um, I didn't, and I, I prefer the physical, you know, coming to school physically and learning physically, seeing my teachers seeing uh my, my my classmates um that's what i prefer in the first week uh, after the holiday break that was really tough so that's an obstacle right that's a tough obstacle right so once you name something that was a challenge a tough obstacle in class at school uh maybe at school for you your obstacle was you know with staying within your bubble not being able to go to uh play hang out with students from other classes right um and of course outside of school Maybe for you, your obstacle was, you know what, uh, the rule, uh, if it's related to COVID, not uh, not having the ability to go out, maybe to restaurants, uh, movie theaters, uh, amusement parks. So uh, anything that we, we cannot do, maybe for you right now, that could be an obstacle. All right. So take a moment again to think about your tough obstacles and try to find something positive in them. Okay, so before you uh, pause the video, the, in the examples that I just mentioned, I'll, I'll try to find the positive in them, and then we, you can pause the video to fill up your sheet about tough obstacles, okay? So um, if somebody's mentioning that, you know what, yeah, wearing a mask is very tough and not being able to see my class, the other, the other students from other classes, that's really tough, right? Although it is tough, do we see the purpose in it? Do we see that, you know what, it's we're doing it to protect people, right? We're doing it to protect the uh, people in our families, people in our communities. Uh, we are doing it for that bigger purpose, right? Do we understand why we're doing it, even if it's tough, right? Um, if it's something outside of school, do we understand why the, you know, do we, do we try to find something positive in it? For example, the closer, uh, like I mentioned, you know, closing of restaurants, movie theaters. If we think about it, do we see why, you know, they are closed? We might not necessarily, by the way, by the way, we might not necessarily agree with it. Right. But as long as we see, okay, you know what, there's, there's some positive in it. Right. Um, that could help you really deal with that uh, tough obstacle a little bit better. All right. So think about your own tough obstacles that you faced, that you went through. 
Okay, take a moment, fill it, uh, fill it up on your sheet, and then you can come back for this video, and then we're gonna move on to another worksheet. So you could pause the video and come back whenever they're filled out. Okay, welcome back, welcome back. I hope that you had a good, you know, brainstorming uh, session, and you know, you thought about great moments, you thought about tough obstacles, and that you were able to find something positive in them. Okay, so now I want us to, um, when we look at 2020, now we just finished looking back at 2020, we acknowledge what we're grateful for, we saw the tough obstacles, and then we also saw something positive in them, right? Being part of a gratitude attitude, right? That's how we practice it. Now, when we look at 2021, that's ahead, right? Um, we often, you know, I want you to start actually uh, by naming something that you're excited for, something that you're looking forward to. It could be, oh, you know what? I can't wait. I'm very excited for, you know, this whole pandemic to be over right affecting uh the, you know the world really um it could be something like you know what i can't wait for movie theaters and restaurants to be open again i really miss it and you know i can't wait for that to happen right it could be whatever you're excited for you know what it could be going to the next next grade right so if you're in grade six maybe going to high school going to grade uh six if you're in five and so on and so forth right um something that you're excited for right think about something that you're excited for uh, maybe your summer plans, if you already have some summer plans, right? So take a moment, think about summer plans. And then when you come back, think about uh, something that you're excited for, sorry. And then when you come back, we're going to talk a little bit about SMART goals. What are SMART goals? How to set SMART goals? And um, you're going to, by the end of this, you're going to write your own SMART goal, okay? So now you're ready to pause the video. Okay, welcome back. Uh, now I guess, you know, you, you thought about what you're excited about. So let us talk a little bit about SMART goals, but make sure that your posture is very mindful. Your feet are well grounded on the floor. Your back is straight. You're not crushing your lungs. Let us now talk about SMART goals, okay? So this, when I say SMART goals, goals. I don't mean like intelligent goals, right? First of all, what's a goal? A goal is something that you really want to achieve. It's something that you want to do, something that you want to accomplish. SMART, S-M-A-R-T, that acronym really helps you accomplish your goal. So let's look at it together. S for specific and also that sheet, um, your teacher has it. So maybe uh, either if it's printed, you know, you could have it in front of you. If not, uh, you could just look at it uh, from your screen. So S for specific. If, when you're making goals, when you're you know having your goals, it's very important to make sure that your goal is something very specific and not general. So if I say, for example, for me, uh, my goal for 2021, I want to read more. I like reading. I want to read more. Okay. Which one do you think is specific? If I say, I want to read more uh, during my day for 2021, right? Not 2020, 2021. Um, if I say I want to read more, or if I say I want to read one book per month, which one do you think is specific? Which one it has is more detailed, right? If you said reading one book a month, then that's good, right? Because if I say I want to read more, well, that's not specific enough. What Read what? Am I re reading magazines, reading books, reading newspapers? Uh, what type, you know, every how long? What does it mean I want to read more? It's, it's not specific enough. We don't know what you mean, right? Um, so that's the first aspect of SMART goals. Your goal has to be something very specific. Now, the M is something that it has to be measurable. Okay, what does that mean? What is something that you can measure, right? So for example, um, something measurable, I want something that you can easily, like imagine if you have to put a check mark um, to say, to, to, to see if your goal is done, if your goal is accomplished, whether you have to put a check mark, check mark or not, okay? So if I say, you tell me which one do you think is 